So we have to complete the square or write the function in vertex form. The first thing to make sure is that the coefficient of the x squared is 1. Now it's not 1. So we can make it 1 by factorizing out the 2. And just double check that if you were in your head quickly to multiply each of those in there, would you get back to what you had at the start? You would. Okay. Now we're going to look at the trinomial and what's in the b position. Okay, so importantly, what's here? b is equal to minus 7 over 2. You need to remember what to do here is that we need to find a half of b. Okay, so I'm just speeding you up. Remember, finding a half of a number is the same as multiplying by a half. So top by top, bottom by bottom, minus 7 over 4. And then we need to square that as well. Minus 7 over 4 squared. So it'll be 49 over 16. Now, I'm going to put a purple star beside this because it's going to be useful in a second. But right now, what happens is, minus 7 over 2x, we add that 49 over 16. And we also subtract the 49 over 16. The first one is always to add. The second one is always to subtract. Now, the reason I can do that is because, well, doing both of them has a net effect of doing nothing at all. So 4x is equal to 2. Now, I'm just going to leave this first trinomial for a second. And the second part I'm just going to deal with quickly. Uh, subtract the two of them and it's minus 129 over 16. Now the yellow section we can actually factorize x, x, x by x is x squared. Now the reason I put that purple star over here is because it's always quite useful in these questions. It'll always be that purple star, that b over 2 that we use to come in here. You might notice as well that they're the same thing, the, the yellows, the two brackets are the same, so it's x minus 7 over 4 squared minus 1, 2, 9 over 16. Multiply in the 2, 2, x minus 7 over 4 squared minus 1, 2, 9 over 8. And that's it in completed square form. Now the next question says, hence write the minimum point of the, fu of the function. Now the reason it's also called vertex form is because 2x minus 7 over 4 squared minus 1, 2, 9 over 8. Because this number right here is always the minus x coordinate and this right here is always the y coordinate of the turning point. Now remember, what kind of function is it? It's a quadratic, it's a positive quadratic, so it has a minimum. Now some people will be thinking, oh minimum, I can use differentiation, but the question specifically says hence, so you will not be using differentiation in this. So if the minus x coordinate is the minus 7 over 4, the x coordinate will be 7 over 4, and the y coordinate will stay as minus 1, 2, 9 over 8. So make it easy to correct. 7 over 4, minus 1, 2, 9 over 8. So looking at it quite nicely so far, the question has been pretty nice. The rest of the question, why must it have two roots? Well, it's a positive quadratic. looking like that. Well, what are roots? The roots are the, the real roots are where it crosses the x-axis. Why must it have two sections where it crosses the x-axis? Well, looking at what's the y-coordinate of the turning point. Imagine there's a y-axis over here. Minus 1, 2, 9 over 8. 
these are going to be the roots. Okay. So as turning point is below x axis and it is a positive quadratic. It must have two real roots. And the last bit of the question is to ask you to actually find the roots. Now there's two ways of going about the question. I'm going to just come back and have a little look here. 2x squared so the function is 2x squared minus 7x minus 10. You could use the minus b formula to... I'm not going to go and do that. You could use the minus b formula to go and actually find the roots and it's absolutely perfect. Another way of doing it would be to use that section right there. It in completed square form or in vertex form. Okay. We have our function and we want to find out where that is equals to zero. Okay. I'm probably going to need a little bit more space than I have given myself. Okay. We want to find that in completed square form. So Sorry, it is in completed square form. And we want to find the root. So what we can do is actually look at it and go, well, it's, a, it's an equation that I have right now with only one variable, the x. So I can actually go and solve that straight away. x minus 7 over 4 squared. If I add 1, 2, 9 over 8 to both sides, then I can divide both sides by two or multiply both sides by half to get rid of that. X minus seven over four squared is giving me one two nine over sixteen. Take the square root of both sides, x minus seven over four is equal to the square root of one two nine over sixteen. Now I've introduced the square root. I've introduced the square root so I must take the plus and minus version of it. And x is equals to 7 over 4 plus or minus 129 over 16 x is equal to 7 over 4 plus squared 129 over 16 x is equal to 7 over 4 minus the square root 129 over 16 now in general it's quite a nice question um, let's just quickly go through the marking scheme as well for the question. So the question started off with uh, part A. This was a five mark question broken up into zero, two, three, four, and five marks. So quite nice. The next part this section. If you knew this section, you really, really were very happy with part B. It was 0, 4 and 10. So if you got part A, you'd be very happy that you'd probably get the second part and full marks in that. Um, part C. Two questions. 0, 3, 5. Again, if you got part, got part B, you'd probably get part C. And C part 2, 0, 3, 4, 5. Really kind of a junior cert question if you can just use the minus B formula. Oh, in general, pretty nice question. You should have gotten full marks or very close to full marks in that question.